my voices from development perspectives. Hello, Paul Crew here from Development Perspectives, and welcome to Amplifying Voices Episode 2. In this episode of Amplifying Voices, I spoke with Tulip. Tulip shares her story with me, beginning with the circumstances that brought her to Ireland from her home country of Myanmar. So Tulip, you're very welcome to the offices of Development Perspectives today on, on a very sunny Friday afternoon. I'd like to maybe just start by asking you to tell us your story from the start. Hello, Paul. First, I would like to thank you for having me on this Amplifying Voices podcast. I'm Sona Dajun, but you can call me Tulip. I'm from Myanmar, and now it's been more than one year that I have been here in Ireland. The reason I'm here in Ireland is there was a military coup in my country. And the reason for the military coup is that in the 2020 November general election, the opposition party and LD won the election by a landslide in the whole country. And the military back party lost and they were dissatisfied with the result of the election. On the 1st of February 2021, when the people elected the winning party prepared to resume the parliament, General Mina Line led military forces detained many political leaders, including President Wu Wei and State Councillor Aung San Suu Kyi. Because they didn't want to hand over full power to the civilian government. Approximately five days after the coup, Protests against the military coup spark across the country and people were demanding the military hunter respect their votes, abolish the 2008 constitution, restore democracy and establish federal democracy. At that time, I was a broadcast journalist at one of Myanmar's independent media outlets called DVB in Rangoon, which is the capital of Myanmar. As a journalist, I went to several protests on the ground, interviewed many young people who we call Generation Z, and asked them why they took part in the protests, what impact they had, and what results they were hoping for from the protests. I saw a lot of Generation Z, and though they were not fully understand the politics, they took part in the protests because some of them were first-time voters in the 2020 general elections and they wanted their votes to be counted for the development of the country. About two weeks after the protests against the military coup, the military forces began cracking down on the peaceful protesters, arresting them and torturing them and killing some people. And the peaceful protests become more intense and turn out to violence and fight against the military hunter. Many journalists had been arrested because the military hunter wanted to stop the flow of information and to cover their human rights violation both locally and internationally. Unfortunately, one month after the coup, the military hunter revoked the Prokhat's license of the media with which I was working, and it became illegal to report and broadcast on the ground. But our CEO decided to broadcast from exile because the media play a vital role for the country and especially in this time of crisis. People deserve to know what's happening in the country. Then our media are operating both on the ground and in exile. In my neighborhood, many people knew that I was working for the media whose license had been revoked and there were a lot of informers as well. So I was concerned about my own safety. I didn't want to get arrested and be tortured. In our country, we have a long history of journalists being arrested and killed for their journalism work. What I was thinking at that time was, if I didn't get arrested and I was alive, I could help my country in many other ways. That's why I escaped from Rangoon to the Thai Burma border. But the situation got more intense and I couldn't walk on my media walk from there. 
Then I decided to flee to Thailand illegally. During my stay in Thailand, I continued working for the media in which I work. I was still interviewing many young people and youth leaders online and running the youth program through multiple digital platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, and websites. When I was living in Thailand, I didn't have a proper document and I felt insecure. So I emailed UNHCR Thailand and explained my situation, what I have been through. A few months later, UNHCR responded to my email and said they were going to help me. They interviewed me and told me that Ireland's government wanted to help me find refuse in Ireland. That's why I'm here in Ireland. Tulip continues by sharing her first impressions upon arriving in Ireland and the support that she has received. My first impression of Ireland is that I felt safe because I was living illegally in Thailand. And when I first arrived, I feel safer than living in Thailand. And there is another girl with me and only two people from our country got a chance to settle down in Ireland. At the airport, one staff member from the International Organization for Migration picked us up and sent us to the Mosni Accommodation Center, where I'm living right now. At Mosni, they provide us with a fully furnished single room, including the living room, kitchen, bedroom, and bathroom. They also give us a foothold card to buy food and other household items in Mosni. They provide us not only a place to stay, but also basic needs. They also provide us basic English classes, computer class, and vocational trainings, such as cooking, sewing, and beauty class. I'm grateful for that. Tulip also shared some of the challenges she has faced since arriving in Ireland. Personally, there are a few challenges I have been through. The first challenge is that language barrier. Because English is not my first language, it is my second language, and Though I have been learning English since a young age, we didn't have a community to speak English. And the second challenge is dealing with some government administration stuff, like applying for Irish resident card, because the government's operation is quite different from our countries. And there is no interpreter for us, because there are only few people from Myanmar living in Ireland. The third challenge is educational opportunity. I was graduate in English and history in my country, but my qualifications were not equivalent to those in the Irish education system. So I must start with that level education to be graduate. And even if I have done my third level education, I could not study at the university because I could not apply for a government scholarship. If I want to apply for a government scholarship, I had to stay in Ireland or other European countries for at least three years. And I have been in Ireland for about one and a half years, so I'm ineligible to apply for the scholarship. Another challenge is job opportunities. Job opportunities are very limited for me, and it is not easy to find one. I applied for several jobs, but I didn't have any work experience here. So I have been rejected many times due to my qualifications, experience, and language barrier. So I'm trying to apply for some voluntary jobs to get work experience. These are the challenges that I have been through so far. Next, I asked Shulip to outline some of the frustrations in furthering her career now that she has arrived in Ireland. To be honest, I'm a bit frustrated with the educational opportunities for refugees and asylum seekers. 
What I'm thinking is that if we get a chance to study higher education as soon as possible, we could contribute our knowledge and skills to our community and country faster. If I got a chance to speak with the Minister of Education, I would ask them to review and ease the restrictions on education for immigrants. Regarding career progression, though I had 14 years of broadcast journalist experience, I could not apply my experience and skills here because my experience is outside of Ireland in a different language. So many employers might not dare to hire me due to my language barrier and they might not trust my capabilities and experience. But I will not give up and I believe that there will be one place for me that meets my skills. Right now, I'm looking for as many jobs as possible. And if I got a job, I would work. If I got a part-time job, I would study further education part-time. But if it was a full-time job, I would stop studying. I'm desperately hoping to get a job, not only for a stable income, but also for my educational progression and to support myself. Now I'm relying on the government's support, but it is not a good idea for the long term. And I feel guilty for not working because I've been working all my life and now I'm jobless. It is depressing me. At the moment, I'm hoping to get a proper qualification to find a job and I'm open to many voluntary jobs for work experience. I then asked Tulip about the challenges facing her home country and her message to the Irish people about this topic. When I arrived in Ireland, many people asked me where I was from and when I told them I was from Myanmar, they didn't know where my country was. I told them it's a country in Southeast Asia and its neighboring country are Thailand, China and India. They knew all the neighboring countries except my country and they didn't know what was happening in my country. They know about the Ukraine war and they help and support it. Now it's been three years since our country was under military coup. We haven't gotten much international attention or support for our people. I feel like the crisis in our country has been forgotten and neglected by the international community. And Ireland is no exception. So I want Irish people to be aware of what's happening in our country and support us physically or mentally because the fight between military armies and local people's defense forces is still going on and our people are living in fear and they have suffered human rights violation by the military armies daily. The military armies are still arresting and killing civilians, banning down villages, which make many people internally displaced, and shelling the temporary refugee camps within the country. A lot of girls and women have been raped and killed by the military armies, and thousands of young people are hopeless and have lost their basic human rights because of the conflict. That's why I want to request that Irish people remember our country in their prayers. And finally, Tulip describes the roles and responsibilities that the media has in providing a voice for the voiceless across the world. Since I was here in Ireland, I have watched some media channels such as RTE News and Virgin Media. I found very little news about Myanmar has been reported and most news was presented as breaking news and news tickers when there were human rights reports from the UN about Myanmar and when the famous political leader Aung San Suu Kyi was sentenced to more than 30 years in jail. In terms of media, media plays a vital role in every country and it influences our society from politicians to citizens. The impact of the media can change the policies of a country 
help the country's development and keep people well informed about what is happening around the world. As a former journalist, I want to urge Irish media to occasionally report about our country because the media represents the voices of voiceless people and now people from Myanmar have lost their freedom of speech and expression. So on behalf of people from Myanmar, please inform and address the current situation about Myanmar to international communities and give pressure to policymakers to take action about Myanmar in the UN and ASEAN. Hopefully we, we can hear a little bit more about these other conflicts with Myanmar included. And maybe there's a universal lesson that can be learned about how to deal with, with the challenges and, and, and deal with these conflicts that can be shared. I'd like to thank you for your openness to, to share your story, your bravery in sharing it, and yeah, to, to wish you luck in your educational pursuits and your job searches. Having had the chance to get to know you through the Amplifying Voices project, I think um, there will be many media outlets that are lucky to have you involved. And yeah, th- thanks so much to you. And yeah, looking forward to seeing how your future endeavors progress. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for giving me a chance to speak and to share my story. Thank you. Amplifying Voices. From development perspectives, 